is my show. I'm finding stuff out that you want to know. Just ask me a question that I don't know. That's why finding stuff out is the name of the show. So just give me a shout and we'll figure it out with the help of some friends and the fun never ends on. Finding stuff out, finding stuff out, finding stuff out. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Hi, welcome to Finding Stuff Out, the show where you send in your questions and I find out the answers. I hope I'm not scaring you right now. I'm doing this because of a question I got from Austin. Why do spiders have eight eyes? Yeah, why do they? I know spiders have eight legs, but eight eyes? That's crazy! Well, Austin, I don't know why spiders have eight eyes, but by the end of the show, I'll find out the answer because I'm focusing on one of our most important senses, sight. Now here's a question from Sophia. How do we see with our eyeballs? Well, Sophia, I made this music video to answer your question. Check it out. We see with them, light comes through our pupil and the lens to the retina, where rods and cones send a signal to our brain, not our nose, but the image comes in, upside down, so our clever brain turns it around. Then the down is up, and the up is down, and it all makes sense again. Wow. Glad I don't have to wear a spider eyes every day. Anyway, here's a question from Serena. Why do cats eyes glow in the dark? Well, Serena, I checked. And remember that retina I sang about? It's this layer at the back of the eyeball that senses light. Cats have an extra layer behind the retina. It captures more light. That's why cats can see well in the dark. That extra layer is like a mirror, so it reflects the light that comes into the cat's eyes and it's why their eyes seem to glow in the dark. Meow. But the cat's eyes aren't glowing. They're just reflecting the light back out again. Why can't we see infrared? Well, Anthony, I checked, and it's amazing, but we can't see some kinds of light. The sun makes light in what are called waves. Just like waves in water, they can be different distances apart. They call all these light waves a spectrum. Our eyes can only see the light waves in the middle of the spectrum. It's what we call visible light. But there are waves of light we can't see, like ultraviolet and infrared. But birds and insects can see ultraviolet, and some snakes can detect infrared. And lucky for them, they can sense not just the infrared light made by the sun, but also the infrared light animals give off. Mmm, tasty! The snakes don't see that light through their eyes. They have sensors lower down that detect the infrared of the animals they hunt. Now here's a question from Dante. How can hammerhead sharks see with eyes like that? Yeah, imagine if you had eyes way out on the side of your head like that. I can see you. And you too. It looks like a hammerhead shark's eyes point to the side but I found out that their eyes are tilted slightly forward so they can see depth just like we can. And with their eyes way out on the side like that, they can not only see out to the front and sides, they can see behind themselves too. I'm glad they can't walk on land. Humans have excellent vision, but we're not perfect. We can get tricked by something called an optical illusion, and that's today's... <laughs> Uh-oh, do try this at home. She knows all about eyes. And I think we're in for a fun surprise. Please welcome Dr. Kathy Mullen. Hi, Harrison. I've got something really fun to show you. I'm being hypnotized. Stop it. <laughs> wow, it really looks like it's spinning. But it's just a normal piece of paper, right? Yeah, the image on the piece of paper isn't moving at all. But why does it look like it's moving, then, if it's actually not? Well, this pattern's forming an image on the back of your eye, rather like in a camera. 
And then as you move your eyes over the page, that image on the back of your eye is moving all around. And your brain is fooled into thinking that the pattern's moving. Cool. What's next? Now, which of these two lines do you think is the longest? The longer one. The longer one is the top one, I'm going to say. Well, I think most people would agree with you, but that's not actually correct. What about this one, then? What? Nope, that one isn't longer either. In fact, both of these lines are exactly the same length. What? 37. And 37? Yeah, your eye isn't telling the truth. They're the same. They're the same length. But how? And what's happening here is that these two end pieces that are fanning out mm -hmm. like this, they're stretching the line and making your brain think it's longer than it is. But with this bottom line, the opposite is happening. The little pieces pointing inwards are fooling your brain into thinking it's shorter. That's crazy. But there's lots of other illusions like this one. Ah, so which of these three blocks do you think is the tallest? Uh, hmm. The tallest one is the one at the back. But actually, they're all exactly the same size. They're all exactly the same? They are. 13. 13? They're all 13 centimetres. Yep, this is an illusion of perspective. So it's rather like a tall building. We know when we look at a tall building that it's very, very big, but when we're a long way away from it, it might seem quite small. Let's check it out in the real world. So we have these three identical rectangular blocks here, and if we set them up, the one closest will look the biggest and the one furthest will look the smallest, right? Yeah, that's right. But in our illusion, our brain thinks that the block at the right is bigger than the others because the perspective lines trick us into believing that it's further away. But take away that perspective lines and the three blocks look the same size. It's only a drawing. It's not like in the real world. So I guess seeing isn't always believing. Well, not exactly. Thanks for being on my show. You're welcome. Dr. Mullen showed me some illusions, and I'm going to test one out on some kids today with my assistant, Evan, here. To me, it looks like number eight is doing circles. It looks like an endless tornado, and I feel like I'm going to fall in it. It looks like a giant eye. It's really big, but scary. It just looks like the circles never stop, and they look like at the end it changes colors. Some illusions involve not seeing things that actually are there, as I'm about to show you in... My Great Challenge! Today, my great challengers are Michael, yes. Nicholas, yes. and Alexia. Yeah. <laughs> so today, my great challenge is all about optical illusions, things that aren't always what they seem at a first glance. So today, I'm focusing on the illusion of camouflage. This moth is camouflaged. It blends in with its background, so it's hard to see, just like this scorpion fish. So here are the rules. There are 60 jelly beans hidden throughout the attic, and you'll have two minutes to try to find as many as possible. Sound good? Yeah. yeah. So we have Team Hawk, Team Lion, and Team Wolf. One of the jelly beans is right in front of them. OK, so you have two minutes starting now, go. Ow. <laughs> Hawk gets it. Wolf uses her predator eyes to spot her first jelly bean. And another quick one. Lion and Hawk go for the computer desk. I hid eight jelly beans there, including one in a candy jar. <laughs> that one will be hard to spot. How many can they find? One. And only two for Lion. Oh, Hawk finds the one in the candy jar. Lion makes a move for the experiment table. I've got 11 tricky ones hidden there. How many can he find? One. Two. Oh, he's walking away. Going toward the pink napkins. Misses it. He walks by the yellow one, too. There's five jelly beans in the small area near the aquarium. Hawk finds one of them. I also match the colors of my jelly beans to the toys at the back of the attic. Missed the one on the gorilla. 
Hawk joins Wolf upstairs to see if she's missed any. Bingo! 30 seconds. They've been searching for a minute and a half, but there's still a lot of jelly beans left. Looks like Lion saw something. Or maybe not. My masterpiece, the granola special, still hasn't been found. But Wolf is getting dangerously close. Will she find it? No, it's just too good. <laughs> 10 seconds. Time for a last ditch effort. Okay, time's up. Let's see how you guys did. Seven, eight, nine jelly beans for Team Wolf. Let's see how Team Lion did. Three, four, five jelly beans. So Team Wolf is beating Team Lion right now. Aww. And let's see how Team Hawk did. Seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. It looks like Team Hawk's our winner. Yes. Awesome, congratulations. So you guys found about 30 jelly beans, which means there are still 30 more hiding in this attic. What? In order to fool the eye, all good camouflage relies on matches in color, texture, and even shape. That's the key to the survival of a lot of species in nature. The animals that want to eat them can't see them. Well, all of you guys get to keep the jelly beans that you found, but I wouldn't eat them because I painted some of them, and also Squeakers, my guinea pig, was running around here, so I don't know if the brown ones are actually jelly beans. Ew. Yeah. Well, thanks for playing my great challenge, guys. And why do people wear glasses? Maybe it's a fashion statement. Actually, it helps them refocus the light. It's pretty cool how it works. Check out this cartoon I made. If you have perfect vision, your eye looks like this. If you are nearsighted, this happens. Because of the way your eye is shaped, you can see things that are close to you just fine. But something that is far away gets focused here in front of the retina instead of on the retina. If you're farsighted, you can see things that are far away. But because of the way your eye is shaped, things that are close to you get focused behind the retina, so it looks fuzzy. Glasses refocus the light to be in the right place not behind or in front of your retina. Why do people go blind? To find out, I came to Calgary to visit with Tate Hoyam. Hi, welcome to my show. Thanks for having me on your show. So, to answer Devin's question, what causes blindness? Well, it can be by an accident. You can be born with it, you can get a disease that causes it, or your eyes can just wear out over time. Tate is 12 and lost most of his vision to a disease when he was just a baby. But that doesn't stop him from doing a lot of cool things. Like playing this weird instrument called a hydrolophone. That's awesome. When someone's blind, do they see anything at all? It depends. Some people are completely blind and can't see anything at all. But some people can see shapes and shadows. Some people can see a bit. Anything. Tate asked me if I wanted to see what he sees. Can I show you some? Sure. OK. Tate, where are you? I'm here. Close your eyes. Close my eyes, why? Because I'm going to put goggles on you. It makes it seem like you have less vision. Oh, OK. OK. And, and there. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Oh. It was weird with the goggles. I could still see a bit, but even walking around was difficult. I can teach you how to use a cane. Oh, OK. So the two things you need to remember is don't lift it up in the air and hit people. Right. Use the hand that you are most comfortable with, right. left or right. So my right hand. Mm -hmm. And then make sure your hand is in the middle, like near your stomach. Mm -hmm. And then when you're walking, you just have to go like that as you're walking. Just left and right? Yep. And you have to do it like opposite to what foot. So right, left, right, left, right, left, like that. Right. And then if you hit something, you would stop. OK. Tate can go anywhere he wants with his cane. Which, which way did you go? Tate? I'm not quite there yet. Tate? So how can blind people manage to do the same things that sighted people do? Well, even if you're completely blind, you can still read. It's called Braille. Why don't I show you some? Sure. How does Braille work? It's made up of dots, normally on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. But people can actually tell what it says by putting their fingers on it. How about I show you how to make the letter F? Sure. So if you put one there, one there, and one there, that's F. 
Okay, yeah. You got then, it, yeah. And then you can feel the bumps. Yeah, and they're a little bit smaller on a piece of paper, but right. they're still there. Right. Mm -hmm. What does it say on this piece of paper? How about you find out? There's a kind of a cheating thing here. Okay. You can look at it. Okay. <laughs> Let's see here. You got an F. I. What's this? <laughs> Oh, that's an N. <laughs> You're probably a lot faster than this, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Here, how about I try it? Okay, yeah. And I'll read it with my fingers, too. Okay, go for it. Uh, finding stuff out with Harrison and special guest Tate. Nice. Yeah. Why don't we go play some road hockey? Sure. Well, Harrison, since we can't see very well, a lot of times me and other people who are visually impaired like to use these, a ball or a puck with a bell or bells inside it. Right. OK. OK. Yeah! Where did it go? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> of course, it's not exactly a fair game. Yes! Tate is so used to not having sight ah. that he can sense where things are. Yeah! But I sure can. And again. And again. Ah! <laughs> yes! Ah, okay, before you get too far ahead of me in points, I want to thank you for being on my show. Thanks for having me. Okay, so you've heard the expression, seeing is believing. But can hearing be seeing? Is it true some people see colors when they hear music? Seeing colors when you hear music? I think my parents see red when I play my drums too late at night. Just kidding, but I checked Erica, and it's actually true. There really are people who say that they see colors when they hear music. That made me think, if you take all the colors in the universe and multiply it by all the sounds in the universe, that could be like a bazillion combination. Guitar times yellow equals orange times cello. And getting warm, if there's eight notes in an octave times a million colors, multiplied by a rim shot. Flats and sharps and banjos and harps. Brain sending signals at light speed. Yay. You're gonna make my head explode. People who can see color when they hear sounds have what's called synesthesia. Scientists still aren't sure why it happens. But they think that for people who see color when they hear music, there might be some overlap in their brains and the parts that normally separate hearing from seeing. Now here's a question from Jessica. Why don't worms have eyes? She knows about bugs, the hows and whys, and the reason that worms don't have eyes. Please welcome Julie Hamill. Hey, Irison. Oh. I have a surprise for you. Gee, for me? Ugh. What about these worms? How do they see if they don't have any eyes? Well, here you go. You can look at it. Well, actually, they have light-sensitive cells, which help them detect light. But there's no lights underground for them. <laughs> yeah, but when they're going out, it's big danger for them. Julie tells me that the light-detecting cells tell the earthworm when it's leaving the safe, dark underground for the dangerous light above-ground world. So are there any other animals that don't have eyes? Well, actually, there's cave fish, which live really, really deep underwater where it's all dark. So they don't need eyes. They have sensitive cells which detect pressure and also movement around them. And there's also bats. They have eyes, but they use echolocation. Right, echolocation. That helps them when it's pitch dark. Notice that echolocation has the word echo in it. Bats make really high-pitched sounds, but we can't hear them. Like all sounds, they travel through the air as waves. When the waves hit an object, they bounce off that object. A bat listens carefully to the echoes. That's echolocation. And I see you've brought some spiders with you, and those all have eight eyes, right? Not exactly. I have a couple species here. Would you like to see the tarantula? OK. Like most spiders, the tarantula has eight eyes. But others have six four, and even two eyes. There are even spiders with no eyes at all. But at this moment, all I can think about are the eight eyes crawling on Julie's arms. 
So can it see me right now with all those eyes? Yeah, they can see quite a lot because of the eyes. They can see all around them, but he sees you as a shadow. Right, so they don't see color, it's all black and white? It's all black and white and it's all fuzzy. That's kind of weird then. They have all those eyes, but they can't see as well as us. No, but they can see more around. Right. If I do this, they'll see me. Weird. <laughs> well, thanks for being on my show and for not putting the spider on me. Maybe next time we'll try and take it. We'll see. All this spidery talk brings me back to the question that started this web of exploration. Why do spiders have eight eyes? Well, Austin, the big answer is the better to see you with. If you had eight eyes and eight arms, imagine the wild drum solo you could play. Or maybe not. I found out from Julie that spiders don't actually see as well as we do, but having all those extra eyes lets them see in many different directions at once. It also lets them see the things they want to eat and avoid the things that want to eat them. That's my show for this week. Thanks for watching. We see with them, light comes through our pupil and the lens to the retina, where rods and cones send signals to our brain, not our nose, but the image comes in, upside down, so our clever brain turns it around, then the down is up, and the up is down, and it all makes sense again. Wow.